We are still watching two areas in the tropics, one of which just became potential tropical cyclone 16. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about it. Regardless of if this becomes a tropical system, it's that one off the southeast corner of the U.S. It is going to bring tropical storm conditions to a lot of the east coast over the weekend. And we're still watching this big blob of thunderstorms near Africa. That could become a tropical depression by the weekend. And we're really watching it closely for our friends in the Caribbean. We're going to have the latest steering, the latest modeling on that coming up as well and then at the end of the video we're going to take one final look at nigel as it continues to work its way into the north atlantic before we get into the video if you do want to stay updated on the weather and of course as we move further into hurricane season you have to hit subscribe please do that if you find this content helpful please give it a thumbs up it really does help us out a lot post in the comments where you're tuning in from all right so here we go this is the area right here off the florida coastline off the southeast corner of the u.s that has been officially designated as potential tropical cyclone 16 i'll get into all what that means in just one second later on in the video in a couple of minutes and if you're interested in this this entity more you can look at the time codes in the description and kind of scrub across but that is going to be our likely next tropical depression as it moves away from the Cabo Verde Islands and we'll have a full breakdown on that coming up so here is the track of potential tropical cyclone 16 a couple of things here it's not meteorologically tropical it has to have a warm core it has to have thunderstorms wrapping around the center and get all of its strength from the warmer waters it's not there yet meteorologically so that is why it is a potential tropical cyclone because it has the potential to do so also of note any storm is called a cyclone when it's in the tropics it's a tropical cyclone so again there's a lot of semantics here a lot of meteorology but nonetheless impacts are going to be the same whether it becomes officially and meteorologically a tropical storm or not i'll show you those impacts in just one second but there you go you see the cone there headed right towards uh, north carolina and then lifting up into the mid-atlantic and parts of the northeast expected at least from the hurricane center here to come ashore as a 60 mile per hour tropical storm we were showing you some of these uh wind gusts in previous videos here that we could have those wind gusts pushing 50 60 maybe even upwards of 70 miles an hour right along the coast so i want to show you now the high resolution future radar here as we take you into friday and then into the upcoming weekend you see some rain towards myrtle beach and into south carolina most of this though is going to push due north right into us in north carolina so wilmington Hatteras, the Outer Banks, just to the east of Charlotte. And you see that curl there. You see that spiral. This is now through early Saturday morning, likely coming ashore right around here, give or take. But you see the heavy rain kind of back-ending towards Myrtle Beach and then lifting up into central North Carolina, even into Virginia. Some very gusty winds coming our way as well. I'll show you that coming up in the future wind gusts. And look at all this heavy rain as it kind of unravels here there's the center down here but look at all the heavy rain toward boston new york city long island and connecticut parts of massachusetts rhode island again and then back into northeast this is likely going to impact us more than what lee did as it kind of worked its way out in this direction nonetheless tropical storm conditions are going to be possible and likely through a lot of the east coast friday into saturday and then kind of winding down as it pushes through sunday in terms of the rainfall, again, several inches are going to be likely, especially the closer to the coast you are. Look at that, a widespread two to four inches of rain coming towards coastal North Carolina into Virginia, even up into Delaware, parts of New York City, Nantucket, into Boston area. That's going to be a widespread two to four inches there. Could likely even see that towards D.C., State College, Pennsylvania, and towards Central PA. That's what we could see two to four inches of rain as well back towards southwest virginia roanoke into blacksburg into danville martinsville anywhere from a half inch of rain maybe up to an inch in extreme cases again the further east you are the higher opportunity you're going to have for some bigger rains we're going to watch for localized flooding there we could have isolated higher amounts than that as that tropical moisture kind of surges in from the atlantic in terms of the wind again it's nothing too too crazy but we are going to see a tropical storm conditions anyway work their way into the Carolinas. Look at that Wilmington wind gust. Again, nothing crazy. You'll notice it's there tomorrow afternoon, though. 27 mile per hour gust and then a 43 mile per hour gust off of Hatteras. You see the wind speeds or the wind gusts, I should say, increase further as we get into Friday, September 22nd. There's 7 o'clock. Hatteras, our wind gust pushing 50, maybe 60 miles an hour. And then all of those gusts and lift up the east east coast, eastern seaboard, Virginia Beach, our wind gusts in that 50 to 60 mile per hour ballpark. This is early Saturday morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. And then up towards Rehoboth Beach, you see our wind gusts, 50 to 60 miles an hour as well. Atlantic City, look at that. We're in that same 
50 to 60 mile per hour ballpark. So really all up and down the East Coast, the closer to the beaches you are, that's where we're going to have the best opportunity for those stronger tropical storm force wind gusts. And then even getting up into Boston, Nantucket, 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts, 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts. So again, college football games on Saturday on the East Coast likely going to be wet and a little windy courtesy of potential tropical cyclone 16 it will likely be if it's going to be named it'll be named by that time all right if you're still with me give it a thumbs up this video for my caribbean friends this is what we're going to be watching closely for you guys here this just rolled off of africa on wednesday the one thing that we know for sure is that this is going to be slow to develop, and I'm going to get into why in a second. Then we're really going to break down the steering currents uh, that we're going to be watching over the next 7 to 10 days as we round out September. Here is the system itself, but there's also this little disturbance out ahead of it. Now, what is going to keep this thing weak early on is that these two systems are going to play with each other, they're going to fight with each other, and one of those is going to try to come out to be the dominant cluster of thunderstorms to form the dominant center of low pressure until that happens it's really going to be a tough gauge in the short term where this thing is going to go because we need to have that well-defined center so that the computer models can latch on to where the center is if the models don't know where it's starting it's not going to end not going to know where it's going to end up so that's what we are watching in the short term i want to show you a couple of models first then i'm going to show you what is steering this thing and you see right here here is our blob number one that little red circle here and then here's more of our elongated disturbance out ahead of it the interaction of the two does keep this thing weak early on you see that right there still an open wave at this time this is september 24th in the morning as it treks across the atlantic you see it's slowing down just a little bit there we go september 26th here of course are the caribbean islands that we are watching closely you do see though at the very last minute here it hooks up to the north we would like that keep it safely away from the northeast caribbean and also keep it away from bermuda we have high pressure here and high pressure here i'm going to illustrate that further coming up when we break down the steering current so we like the european solution here it goes up and out it impacts nobody gfs though it's a little bit different it's a little bit different with the storm it's a little faster with it and it's a little different with its steering so here we go this is september 24th now seven o'clock notice it's much much lower also than what the euro has so again this is these differences matter significantly if the center ends up forming lower it's going to obviously have a better chance to stay lower if it forms higher after its little fight or its little playtime with that other disturbance then it's going to have a better chance to be a more northerly tracking storm so the details matter significantly even these little details and we just have no way of ironing that out right now because we have no way to get planes out there no way to get data to see this little battle that's going on between those two disturbances anyway september 24th it's right there and then you see it as we get towards september 27th so remember the euro was like right up in here the gfs is putting this right smack dab in the northeast caribbean so that would impact land so that's why we are going to watch this closely and i'll show you the differences in just one second and then it rides right on through uh the northern stages of the islands and then it kind of pinwheels back out so both models again have it missing the southeast corner of the united states both have it missing the bahamas it kind of grazes the turks and caicos all of those little details though are way too far out at this time so everybody should just be watching the good news for the united states at least is that we're likely you kind of see this right here that's a big big chunk of high pressure so that is a cold front right there as we get deeper into september it becomes really really hard for these african waves to connect to the United States because the cold fronts start to become a little more frequent and a little more prolific, which would help to bend. And that's what you saw there. So cautiously optimistic for the United States, but still watching very closely for the Turks and Caicos all the way through the Northeast Caribbean as we move forward. Now, to kind of show this a little more detail on what's going on with the steering, this is just as important as looking at the model. So here is the European. Both models show this guy right here. Nice big chunk of high pressure kind of taking over the entire North Atlantic. The bluer the color on this map, the higher the pressure. The redder colors on here indicate the lower pressure. So you'll see our little guy pop up right here northeast of the Caribbean. What's going on and what the Euro is identifying here is a weakness between this building high pressure off of Canada in the northeast corner of the U.S., and then this main Bermuda Azores high chilling right there. 
it finds the weakness and it goes up and out. You see it right there, nice and safely. Then the big chunk of high pressure again pushes it away from Bermuda. We love that. The GFS, the American GFS, is a little different. It's good in the short term. It's similar in the short term. Here is our little speck of red. That is our developing system. Big, expansive chunk of high pressure. That's the Bermuda High, again, forcing it to the west. And then you see it strengthening as it goes towards the Northeast Caribbean. On this scenario, again, it would impact land a little bit anyway. It's close to impacting land. The center, again, these details, way, way too far away to iron out where the center is and anything like that. But at least in this scenario, the center would stay away from the Northeast Caribbean. But those would be at least tropical storm impacts there. Again, that's something that we will iron out. The main thing that I want to show you at this stage of the game is what is steering this. And you clearly see here, there's a whole lot of extra blue right in through here. Remember, we had that weakness here in the Euro, and that allowed it to go up and out. Well, let me get my lines off of here, my telestration lines. This clockwise flow around high pressure guides it further west. Now, that area of high pressure does back off and moves this way and allows it to go out missing the united states we would watch that for bermuda of course or right in here but all that blue again is a nice big chunk of high pressure that will help to guide this thing away from the united states so we would watch that significantly now this is that whole butterfly effect of thing if this thing were to slow down and be back here by this time then that area of high pressure will be right here and that would help to guide it into the united states so it's threading the needle it's got to do that stuff that is just impossible to figure out at this time because there's so many little nuances that mean big big things down the line it's something that we are going to watch but i wanted to show you again the kind of things that we are watching here as this likely tropical depression over the next few days or the weekend is going to be dealing with in the short term it's going to be slow to develop in the long term we're going to be watching that canadian high and if there's the weakness between the two if there is it's got a good shot at missing land if there's not it has a good chance at, at least impacting parts of the caribbean so we're going to watch that closely for our friends in the caribbean there's nigel doing its thing out there still a hurricane as of september 21st in the morning it's not going to affect anything just wanted to show you that again that it's still a powerhouse Still category one, but it's lifting up over the North Atlantic, and that is going to eventually work its way up and out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, a lot to kind of unpack. Again, as we continue to keep things busy with potential tropical cyclone 16, again, it's nothing crazy for the Carolinas or New England, but you're going to know it's there. A lot of heavy rain, tropical storm force, wind gusts for sure. And then again, watching closely in the long term, that system that rolled off of Africa on Wednesday especially for our friends in the Northeast Caribbean. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on these two systems and then beyond, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that, and we will catch you next time.